So in today's video, we are going to be talking about psychedelic integration and what it is, uh, when you might want it, and why it might be useful to you. So if that's of interest, please uh, continue to watch on here. Um, if you're someone who's interested in psychedelic therapy, if you've been kind of following the science, paying attention, you might have heard this term come up in, uh, in context of psychedelic integration. And it may sound like this kind of interesting, mysterious, kind of vague technique, something that psychedelic therapists do that, according to them, makes all the difference in terms of, you know, really getting results out of a psychedelic therapeutic context. Uh, so if you're somebody who's potentially interested in psychedelic therapy for yourself, or you're somebody who, um, you know, is interested in doing an ayahuasca retreat, for example, or has done ayahuasca retreats, or uh, is somebody who um, might even be self-administering psychedelics for the purpose of personal growth and personal healing and emotional healing, psychological healing, and you want to kind of understand more this concept, I hope to explain it to you better today. And I hope to kind of give you a sense of what it is. And then also my own take on it, my own opinion on it, because I do have kind of a strong opinion about this topic. So let's go ahead and just define it first. So when you hear the term psychedelic integration, typically what they mean is this. Um, typically this is going to be something that's going to be used after a moderate to high dose session. So uh, you're going to hear about, you know, therapeutic integration work usually after a person has done, you know, a, a standard to large dose of mushrooms, LSD, MDMA, ayahuasca, whatever. And the general thing is that they're looking at it from this point of view that uh, this model, if you will, of the unconscious mind um, kind of unlocking or releasing out information into the conscious mind that happens during a psychedelic experience or a psychedelic session. So when you take in the substance, you uh, kind of are running your body and your mind in a different pattern than you normally would. And, and through the course of that, uh, as you are introspecting or self-reflecting, the mind can give you experiences and information that you've never considered before that might be true. Things you might have blocked out from your unconscious, things from your past, things from your childhood, things from the environment or the world around you, things about yourself or about the world or your relationships that maybe you hadn't considered that could be a bit unnerving, unsettling, upsetting even, um, you know, highly upsetting even, you know, or even just like, like, I don't really know what to do with that information it could just be kind of out of context to the rest of your life. So that's one scenario where, uh, you know, after the session is over, you know, typically they will do follow up work, which is called integration therapy, where they help you to, um, to weave that understanding or that insight back into the broader context of who you are. So if you got a piece of insight about yourself or about life that you don't know what to do with, integration work is there to kind of help you kind of weave that back in so that you're not just sitting with this weird piece of what do I do with that, you know, that kind of thing. Um, so that's one context. Another context is Let's say you go really deep into an experience. Let's say you do something kind of radical like smoke DMT where suddenly you are thrust into an alternate reality, an alternate dimension, and you have a very strange, totally bizarre, radical experience that feels and seems completely real and completely true to you, right? What do you do with that kind of experience when you come back? So for example, I have a friend who uh, once, I believe, smoked DMT and had an experience of waking up inside a spaceship with aliens. And according to him, this experience for him was, was the real reality. It was so much more real than this reality. And his understanding completely shifted that that was the truth and that he was actually uh, some being on this alien spaceship having a strange experience here on Earth and that was actually the drug trip. So he had this kind of weird inversion of a sense of reality. And it was so powerful and profound for him and so real for him that it really altered his sense of reality here on Earth. And he had a hard time kind of making sense of that, putting that into context, 
Um, and, and there was all this proof and all these experiences and these things they would do with his mind and his body. So he would have subjective physiological responses that validated that this was really true at a very deep level. So the argument you could make for an experience like that is that even if that wasn't real objectively, even if his mind was deep in a hallucination that wasn't true, and who's to say what's real and what's not with an experience like that, um, subjectively to his nervous system, his nervous system went through an experience that was so intense and so profound that it made an impression and it, it laid deep grooves of neural patterning of you know, bod bodily encoding, if you will, encoding that information in his body that he um, was now carrying something that he know, knew or knows in his body that he couldn't necessarily just undo and unwire. It was a part of him now. So the question becomes, what do you do with this new knowledge and this new information when it's so far outside of your normal waking reality? How do we kind of bring that in to what we are and who we are and what we know in a way that allows the mind to settle with that information and be calm and let that become a part of our sense of self or, or a part of our sense of the world. So those are two different but kind of correlated examples of when psychedelic integration work might be required. So, um, you know, typically the way that I understand it from the th therapist that I know it and the kind of the work that I've seen is that it's done after a session, post-session. You don't typically get a lot of integration work during the session. And you don't get a lot of, uh, of you know, of like really like applying therapeutic models really in the session. Most of that is just they, ref they kind of encourage you to reflect back into your own experience and get your own wisdom, allow your experience to self-direct itself. And they kind of hold space with you and kind of help you just kind of feel grounded and safe and secure and in touch so that you're not too distracted away from your own experience. You're not just, you know, running around, you know, chasing your senses or switching the song on the radio every, you know, four seconds or whatever, you know. In other words, you're not allowing yourself to be distracted from what it is you're directly experiencing internally. Uh, so that's kind of your classic psychedelic therapeutic model as, as I know it and as it exists in 2019. Um, so that's kind of, that's what it is. Uh, if you go to Peru, for example, or South America, for example, and do ayahuasca work, they will sit with you afterwards and they'll talk about the experiences. They'll talk about the insights. They'll talk about the kinds of um, archetypal things that happened and they'll put that into context for you. So yes, this is a common experience. A lot of people have this kind of insight. A lot of people have this kind of physiological reaction depending on what's happening with them, you know, with their diet or, you know, if they were addicted to drugs and they're detoxing or whatever it might be that the person experienced. Um, you know, they will put that in context for you and they will help you understand what the medicine and, and what the plant spirits typically will teach you and show you and kind of what these classic experiences are. Or sometimes it'll just kind of validate um, that they've had similar experiences or that these kinds of transmissions have value. And sometimes you just need to be patient and let the wisdom kind of write itself out. So these are all different types of scenarios for psychedelic integration work. Now, what's interesting about integration work is that it's really built upon a model. And so I want to discuss that for a second and kind of lay that out for you. So really what they're using is a Jungian model of psychology here where we have something like the unconscious or something like the shadow, if you will. And then we have something like the conscious or, you know, the, the aware mind, the awareness, right? And the, and the model that they're working with here is that your unconscious, again, is presenting information from your shadow, that, that which has been repressed or unacknowledged or unseen or outside of your waking awareness into your waking awareness for you to um, contemplate, reflect on, connect to, respect, listen to, understand, observe, uh, feel, whatever it is that, that your nervous system and your body and your unconscious is willing you to do. So this would be kind of your basic Jungian model. It's, it's this idea that there's a shadow and this repressed content and it's being brought to your conscious awareness for 
integration. And what integration is in, in Jungian terms is the bringing of the shadow into the conscious in a way where we can begin to just simply accept and agree with and allow these pieces of ourself, these aspects of ourself that have been repressed, whatever they are, into conscious awareness. I'm sure if you're interested in psychology, excuse me, psychology at all, you've probably heard these ideas. I'm probably not telling you anything new. So here's my thoughts on it. Here's my take on it. As someone who, you know, as a personal psychonaut, as someone who has explored my own psychology via psychedelics for decades, somebody who's had hundreds and hundreds of psychedelic experiences, as somebody who studies psychology, studies uh, hypnosis, studies, you know, the mind and the body from these different perspectives. Here's my personal take on it. First of all, um, I do think that there's a time and a place, and it is important if you are struggling with some piece of information that your system provided for you to, uh, to welcome that and to agree with that and allow that in. I think that's really important work to do. And particularly for people who aren't used to self-exploration, they don't do a lot of self-inquiry or meditation or aren't really that used to psychedelics and then say they go to Peru and they you know, do a, a, an ayahuasca retreat and they're just like blown out of this universe completely and have some intense potent experience. For somebody like that, if that's you, you know, the kind of integration work that I've just described is probably going to be very valuable and very important because it's going to help you kind of bridge. It's like, I had this world and now I have this world and this world is telling me all kinds of things that don't make sense with this world and how do I, how do I bridge them together? And if that's kind of the struggle that you're dealing with, I think that's really valuable. But here's the other side of it. Um, as somebody who studies a lot of Buddhism and a lot of kind of, you know, Eastern spiritual techniques, I think that uh, one of the key things that you need to be developing as a human anyways, as a person, is discernment. And that begins internally. So that's discernment with your own thoughts. It's discernment with your own mind. So as your mind and your unconscious you know, spits out thoughts and spits out ideas. If you're a meditator, if you're, you know, Buddhist oriented at all, you're probably going to start to reflect back and learn to discern, is this true? Is this real? Is this accurate? Is this something that's useful to me? Is this something that's not useful to me? Is my mind spitting out gobbledygook? Or am I, you know, receiving some piece of potent, uh, you know, insight and wisdom and transmission from the clearest part of myself? And I think that that's an important distinction and an important skill to be applying in psychedelic therapy. So I know for myself, this was something that I would always do in retrospect after a journey. I would, you know, spend some time reflecting on what it was that my body, my mind were presenting to me and reflecting on if it was accurate and true and useful. You know, was there something of value in what my mind was showing me or was it just kind of excitedly spitting out information to me because I think what happens a lot with psychedelics is that your nervous system just becomes kind of lit up with energy and with life force and it just can excitedly kind of spout out patterns and visions and insights and um, you know some of it isn't that refined of a concept or that res refined of an insight or that refined of an idea and if you're kind of, you know, not used to discerning, if you take everything that your mind spits out as truth or accurate or fact, if you're not used to questioning your own thinking and discerning through and sorting to find the wisdom from the kind of the nonsense, then, um, then you're going to believe it. But if you're used to discernment, then I think that that's a powerful tool that kind of sifts out some of this need for integration work. You kind of, you, you integrate yourself and you can even in, integrate while you were having insights, you know, by really practicing this kind of practice of discernment, discerning whether something's, you know, useful or practical or valuable or what the broader, bigger picture of an understanding or an insight might be, or, you know, what are the ramifications of adopting this belief or this point of view and really kind of becoming wise about what it is that you're thinking and feeling in real time as it's happening and afterwards as well. So that's one thing I would say is that 
integration work is valuable, but it also needs to be coupled with just a personal practice of discernment. Um, for me, what I've always found to be valuable, and this is kind of the work I do and kind of where I'm angling myself. So, you know, with a post psychedelic, you know, session. So if I'm working with someone who just had a journey and, uh, you know, and they want to do a session with me afterwards to kind of uh, actualize and switch on what it is that they've learned. This to me is, I think, the more powerful use of, of, uh, of psychedelics. And, and what I think of when I think of integration work is something more like you got in touch with your higher self. You know, you got in touch with this bigger, broader, more wise, more profound, more aligned aspect of you, you know, or maybe it is like the more true part of you. And you got these downloads and you got this information and you got these insights and you got these gifts and you got all this kind of these good emotions and this kind of encouragement and this clarity about your path and your life and who you are and what you want to do and all that kind of stuff, right? So you get these, these beautiful transmissions. To me, what real integration work is, is then turning that insight into behavioral change, turning that into action, turning that into lasting emotional shift or even a lasting shift in how you feel in your body, feeling lighter, feeling easier, feeling happier, feeling more in touch with spirit, feeling more um, connected to yourself, feeling more at ease with people around you and, and your relationships going better. These kinds of things, you know, or lasting, you know, feeling more motivated. Maybe you cut through the haze and the fog and the demotivation of a kind of depressed phase of your life and you got some clarity and you're like inspired. This happens a lot with people who take a, a solid dose of a psychedelic. You get inspiration, but can you plug that inspiration into lasting behavioral change? Can you transform? Can you shift so that you're not just inspired, but now you're doing what you are inspired to do, right? And to me, this is kind of the missing link. Uh, this is why I think a lot of credibility has been lost in the psychedelic community over the years. This is why hippies didn't actually change the world in the way that, at the degree and, and in the way that they wanted to. This is why a lot of spiritual practitioners, um, you know, struggle to actualize the things that they see or the things that they read or the things that they learn. A lot of it has to do with the fact that, you know, there's a gap, there's a, a rift, there's a, a difference between those moments of powerful state, of, of inspiration, of passion, of clarity, and then the doing, the shifting that into your doing. And, uh, you know, this is, you know, we know from the psychedelic science that part of this is because you're looking at a, a liberation or an expansion out of your default mode network in your brain. So we have kind of a, what we call a default mode network, which is our day-to-day -day consciousness, which uh, can be kind of habitualized and narrow in its scope. So you kind of you kind of narrow down all these behavioral patterns to things that you know work, and you just kind of rerun these you know thoughts and these emotions and these behavioral patterns, and you kind of ritualize and habitualize your life. Then when you take a psychedelic, you kind of like you kind of undo that for a sec, and all of a sudden you're outside the default mode network, and you're like, okay, whoa, okay, there's all these other ways to do life, and there's all these other ways to do me, and there's all these other ways to do thinking and emoting. Now, what do I do with that? You know, and then oftentimes what happens is we see, and then we go right back to the same old kind of default mode network uh, once we come down. And so, what I'm suggesting is that the real, you know, or the maybe the higher bar we could call it of integration work is lasting behavioral change. And uh, so that for me is a much more juicy, exciting target because what I want to see in the world is more self-actualization, more people growing, more people evolving, more people healing, more people feeling better more often, more people living out their best self more and more. I think to me that's like, that's the gold standard. That's the, the jam. That's the, the goods. And so this is what I want to kind of leave you with in this video. It's just an insight and an understanding that that to me is what psychedelic integration is. Um, and just to recap, you know, if you're interested in doing integration work, um, obviously you can come to me. I'm happy to do that kind of work with you post, you know, psychedelic session. Um, I, you know, so, so there's that. If you want to go the hypnosis route, if you want to go the therapy route, if you're, you know, healing PTSD via psychedelic therapy, or you are, 
you know, going the ayahuasca route, you know, any of that massive respect to you. And, um, you know, again, I want to just encourage you to actively take up the skill of learning to discern through your own thinking and your own emotions and, you know, distill out what is the higher wisdom part of you from what is kind of maybe gobbledygook or nonsense that comes up when we're on psychedelics and, uh, and encourage you to do integration work. If you're somebody who's not used to having these kinds of weird far out experiences, perspectives, and you have a hard time accepting and relaxing and letting go into them and allowing them to simply be what they are. Um, and if you're, if you struggle with that and you need kind of context and you need it to kind of be cohesive and fit back in your life and make sense for you, then uh, traditional integration work, I think, is a great place to start for you. So I hope that kind of clarifies a bit for you what psychedelic integration work is, when it might be useful for you, um, you know, and, and what you might get out of it and what to expect so that it's not this kind of pie in the sky, strange, mysterious, kind of dark art thing that you don't know what it is, but you hear, hear these therapists talking about it. Uh, and if you're someone who, like me, is interested in that kind of lasting behavioral transformation or self, you know, self-awareness, self-concept transformation where you not only sh make the shift in insight, but you want to make the shift in behavior in lasting change so that you live a better life, um, feel free to hit me up. I'm happy to do coaching work or at least get on a call with you and tell you more about what I do and, uh, you know, help you see if it's a good fit for you. Either way, I hope you're doing well. And uh, you know, if you are someone who's actively using psychedelics and you are using them to kind of expand your consciousness and heal and awaken spiritually, first of all, thank you for boldly going into that kind of work. Second of all, um, I hope you do it safely. Third of all, I want to just uh, encourage you to remember to you know, come back to sifting through afterwards and just deciding for yourself what was useful, what was valuable, what wasn't, and you know, really having the clarity to sift out the wisdom from all the other information that you might encounter on your journeys. Be well, take care, thank you for watching, and if you like this video, please, please do me a favor, click the like button, you know, if you're really interested in this kind of thing, you know, uh, self-actualization and spirituality and psychedelics and this kind of, kind of you know, middle area that I like to discuss, please feel free to subscribe. I'd love to have you on this channel as a follower. And, uh, you know, if this is of interest to you, watch this space because I will be talking more about psychedelic therapy and personal change work, using psychedelics, using hypnotherapy, using NLP and all the skills and tools that I've learned. I'll be teaching you bits and pieces along the way. And I'll be talking about kind of tangential stuff related to it, whether it's just personal development in general or whether that's kind of, uh, you know, spirituality in general and kind of my thoughts and what I've learned and what I am learning on my path as a spiritual person. Uh, so if any of that is of interest to you, please continue to watch. Thank you so much. Be well, and I'll see you guys soon.